Hi hey everybody, this is uh, John Miller with Hometown Historian Channel again. We are here at Sand Siding Road uh, parking area, which is this right here, and there's Chuck. Uh, we are here in Squatera State Park. We're actually, I'm not sure if we're in Lebanon County yet or if we're in Schuylkill County, but we will. If we are in Schuylkill County, we'll cross over into Lebanon County. We're going uh, E or South, I should say, actually. Uh, this used to be, this is part of the uh, Lebanon Valley Rail Trail. Um, yeah, they used all the uh, railroad tracks. Uh, a lot of them are Cornwall and Lebanon Rail Trails or Railroad uh, original tracks uh, or the Cornwall Railroad. This is Reading Railroad. This was the one that went up through to Tremont from Lebanon. Uh, Squatera Creek would be over that way. And on the opposite side of the Spotera Creek is where you would have the uh, Union Canal, which would be the feeder branch that went from Union Waterworks northwards to Pine Grove. So we're right, right near Twi Twin Grove Park, which is about halfway between Greenpoint and uh, Sudberg. So we're going to go on this track. We're going to film then stop filming and then film again we're actually making a trip out to the armor armor uh bordner cabin which i promised for a while and i'm finally at a stage where i can uh do these types of hikes so i'm gonna pause just quick here because we got bikers coming up and I, a lot of people don't like to be on film we'll be back in a second uh give you a little bit of history here uh you can see areas like this where there was probably homes uh, Swatera State Park was started back in the 70s. They decided they were going to make a uh, dam and they were going to make a state park out of it. Uh, unfortunately, they wound out using eminent domain to go in and basically take everybody's homes for, you know, probably pennies on the dollar. Uh, the Armour Bordner Cabin is the last remaining home that still exists out here. He was actually the head of the group that was facing off against the state, trying to preserve everybody's homes and keep them from being taken. My dad was actually, on a personal note, was actually part of that group. He uh, had just moved into uh, Greenpoint, I think in the late 60s, uh, with my mom. And they had the cabin that I showed you there. That was built in 1929 for uh, a country doctor, which I'm still researching and trying to find out who that was so we can maybe visit their grave site, have a little more information on him because he's a pretty extraordinary guy. But my dad was one of the main people that helped to try to fight that. Of course, they lost. And uh, I wind up giving a lot more history on the Bordner cabin itself and on the gentleman. And I want to try to put in the comments, uh, Joe Allen Litz, who's the county commissioner here, in Lebanon County, Pennsylvania. She's actually one of the main people that really continues to do like the conservation. Because when we get there, I'll explain a few things because it doesn't have any windows or doors, which is part of the decision that was made, uh, hoping that that would keep vandalism from happening. Because, you know, you have the windows and doors, even though it gives people access to not having them it sort of keeps the like doors and windows from being smashed and broken, which thankfully it doesn't sound like there's a whole lot of that that happens, but unfortunately you have these punks out there that have nothing better to do with their time. But uh, <coughs> she, uh, a couple of years ago, like Cliff had made some videos for Wondering Woodsman channel, some heavy rains had come through, I guess it was like a hurricane or something. And it had really torn up because there's a, a beautiful waterfall there uh, right next to the home, which is part of the reason that he built it there. And uh, it had sort of overflowed everything and tore up the road and a lot of other things. That's now all repaired. And once again, Joe Allen was a major force behind getting that all taken care of. But uh, yeah, it's a beautiful area out here. It's a great place to hike, to bike. Uh, I think there are trails that you can take your horses out. Um, so we're gonna probably film up to this bench and then at some point coming up here there's a bridge that crosses the Swatera, which i think you guys are absolutely gonna lo love uh crossing with me because it's just it's amazing like first time i went across it when cliff brought me out here which i might even be right up here uh but it is 
It's a 30, 40 minute hike, I believe, from here. And I think I'm finally at the place health-wise where my foot's really almost feels like normal. Weirdly, I have a case of cellulitis right now, but it's not really affecting me. So they put me on antibiotics and doing pretty well. There's a pretty little creek that comes down through here. I don't know if it has a name or anything, but I always love the sound of water. But uh, so we're gonna probably pause here. I'm gonna let this family go by. That way, you don't have any weirdness with me being in their way or in front of them. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to switch my hands up here a little bit, and you guys can see this. This is the bridge to, to Bear Hole Trail, which is what uh, the Bordner Cabin is right off of that. We'll make out uh, once we get up, there's a bridge, and then I think it's a hill going up to where... It was called Old State Road. And uh, here you can see some of the Swatera here flowing down there. Get a better better view over here. But you just see it just goes over. Like the Swatera sort of splits and there's these islands in between. But it's just so, it's really, really freaking neat. It's just, it's just a place to come and enjoy. And just the beauty of nature. And I have a walking stick with me. I actually want to go, like Josh, uh, the guy that is letting me stay with them, uh, we do a hardware store in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Really, really neat uh, hardware store. Uh, if you're in uh, the general area, it's a cool place to visit. They have great prices and just really, really cool people. But um, Sadly, like my brain's not like I'm going through a little bit of a fibro fog right now, which is when your fibromyalgia, your brain just is like not all there. It's there, but like you just remembering stuff and like names and stuff like that just elude me at times. Uh, if I can think of it later in the video, I'll wind up mentioning it. The water is just so clear right now. You can just see just how it's flowing. It's a beautiful day today too. It's a Sunday. I think it's April 24th. I have the water flowing over that one log. Reminds me of like it'd be like a Bob Ross painting. Some happy little trees. Happy mistakes. There's no accidents. I can't do it like Bob Ross can. He has just one of the calmest demeanors and just he just I I if I'm I'm not ever feeling like sort of weirdy and sad or I'm an angry white man or something like that. I either watched like the Celtic women, which I absolutely adore. I loved Ma Raid, um, who played the violin. And Cliff and I actually went to go see him once, and that was fantastic. Uh, his favorite was Lisa, I think, for the longest time from the original group. And uh, she wasn't with the group at that stage. She had just had another child. But I also uh, watched like on my Vizio TV, I'll pop on the Bob Ross channel and just, I love his painting, the nature and all that kind of stuff, but it's his voice. It just calms you right down. And I always thought it was cool when people would say like, Cliff is the Bob Ross of like chill, chill videos. And he is, he just has a really calming demeanor. And uh, it's a great compliment to be compared to Bob Ross in that regard. This is one you guys will love. I think there's, I don't know if the guy's fishing down there or not, but I'm gonna quick pause this and then take some pictures. All right, let me grab my stick. I can name him too. Frankie, Frankfurter, Woody. I think Woody's a good name. This is my dad's uh, fishing pole. It's not a terribly great walking stick, but what I was saying about that uh, hardware store is they have a, uh, really nice walking stick sort of like what ralph had ralph had a beautiful walking stick and uh anyways i want to get something like that it's a little more sturdy this thing works but it's more more memorial to my dad memory of him because loved my dad and he was huge loved nature loved being out in nature and doing this type of stuff it taught me so much about the natural world 
So I take my dad with me on these hikes with this stick and it's actually pretty cool. So I feel like I have him with me yet and his stories because that was my dad was a tremendous storyteller and uh, it's one of those things you don't realize sometimes until they're gone that you know I give anything to hear one more story from my dad I'd love to take him out here too and take take him with you guys to because you know it's his generation is a dying generation now there's not many of those folks left and they have so many stories and he knew so much about this area. It would have been great to be able to take him along and with you guys and talk about all that. So at some point here, we'll say bye for now to the Swatera Bridge. Uh, and I'm gonna turn this off here because battery goes down quicker than if I'm just filming straight through. And uh, cause I wanna get my filming in on the cabin. Here's one of those things where they have where you can step off your horse. So there are certain trails that you're allowed to bring horses on, certain ones you're not. But like I said, the Lebanon Valley Trail system is phenomenal. Uh, but also, it's so cool to uh, just be able to come out here biking, hiking, just enjoying. And it really is. It's a pretty, pretty wilderness out here. It's, it's some areas. It's like everything's so like Ralph and I went out to uh, see the the tree frogs doing their thing and uh <coughs> you know <coughs> a lot of those areas were strip mines so they're really like ralph says sort of an ugly area but still beautiful in its own way but uh sort of unfortunately with mankind we have have a habit of ruining the most beautiful things in in the world that have been given to us to caretake so with that i'm going to pause and then i think maybe we'll start filming once we get on bear hole trail and then once we get to Bordner Cabin, then I'll start telling you some of the information about it. Sit down, talk to you guys about that a little bit, and then we'll go through, we can actually go through the cabin. You guys can see all that. It's a really neat cabin. Uh, they call it the Falling Water of the East. Uh, falling Water was one of those houses designed by, I think it was Frank Lloyd Wright. Beautiful house. You know, it's, it's a very loose comparison but it is a beautiful 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 cabin and then there's a craig's i believe i'm pronouncing that correctly a craig's or a craig's falls i think it's the largest waterfall here in lebanon county so with that i'm gonna pause and then we'll be back all right here we are again we are now on the bear hole trail uh, this is a pretty little creek that comes down through here So we're gonna do something a little different here. Hey everybody, so you get to look at my ugly mug here for a little bit. Uh, so we're going down the trail now, we're going back north. Uh, and then it'd be on the right here, out that way, be where the uh, house is that we're going to, the Bordner cabin. Turn this around here, let you see the pretty little pool that's here. See if I'm actually getting it in the camera or not. I don't know if I am or not. Hopefully I'm getting it there. But it's really, really pretty. The creek going down through. Now back to ugliness. But uh yeah. So this is a cool, cool hike through here. This road here used to be old state drive. It was the road that was on the other side of the side where the Union Canal was on the Swatera. And uh, you used to be able to drive this whole whole route through here. And along here, all along here were houses, uh, farms, things of that nature. So, you know, people's lives, their memories, you know, their histories here. And uh, so much of it is forgotten, unfortunately. Uh, and it really is these homes that the people are what made them. I said that in the Anvil videos, but it's the same thing here. You know, this was, I think these had like, you know, the Greenpoint area we talked about before with the Blue Eyed Six. You know, you had St. Joseph Springs, Tomstown, you know, Greenpoint, all these other little villages. And it's sort of the whole area was known as, as Greenpoint. And, you know, so many people that lived here, so many people that had their, uh, lives right here and sadly that's 
That's gone. It's beautiful country. Yeah, we used to, my friend and I used to bike this, and this is brutal to bike. Uh, now it's nice, but back then it was like, looked like a war zone with the road. It just wasn't maintained, but there were like huge uh, potholes everywhere. And just a lot of hills, so if you weren't an avid biker, it could be, be a little rough, but uh, yeah. Bear hole trail. Never seen a bear back here. But I'm gonna pause again here. Got some bikers coming up. I wanted to give you a little bit. Let me get my I want to get my finger in the camera like I normally do, but it's just so pretty through the uh, woods here. These pine pine forests, hemlocks, evergreens. So we're still in bear hole. I just wanted to, whenever you have, even though the camera's pointed at me, still get a little weird about it. Uh, you feel a little bizarre, but I like to respect that people don't necessarily want to be on my videos. So I try to shut the camera off in that regard. But, uh, feel good. I feel really, really good. Like, this is, uh, back little twingy so I gotta sort of pause every now and then and sort of rub it and then move my back around to get it from not pinching but hopefully in the next couple weeks I'll finally be able to afford to go back to the chiropractor start getting that situated I finally think I got the shoes that I need that really are working for me there's a nice pair of sketchers that took a couple weeks to break them in but my feet actually feel pretty great knock on wood We'll say knock on Woody here. The stick that my dad bestowed to me to go out hiking and continue to explore nature. I like having him, him with me here today. I'll probably pause here at some point again because I got people hiking up behind me and I don't move fast. There are glaciers that move faster than myself. Sloths that giggle as they go by and turtles that have defeated me in a race much easier than the rabbit or the hare. So I'm gonna pause again. This is sort of what I'm talking about. That way you can't see that well, but like here's the Swati again. We're probably about halfway to uh, on the Bear Hole Trail side to, uh... <laughs> oh God, my brain, to, uh... The border cabin, sheesh. Oh. But anyway, it is weird. Like, you have, like, my mind will be really, really clear. And then I get one of these things. And, like, you're all right to do stuff, but, like, the memory aspect and your focus, you're sort of like a dog chasing cars. Like, you wouldn't know what to do with one if you caught it, but you just sort of like, ah, car, squirrel, ball, ah, cat. But it's just pretty. This is right along the trail. You just come down here. It's probably a great place to fish as well. Um, I always enjoyed fishing in the Swati. My dad and I did, especially where Trout Run comes for Greenpoint and then goes down into the Swati. There's a great hole there. But uh, down near Waterville Bridge, there's a lot of different little holes and there's huge sunfish. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll continue on. I wanted to let everybody pass. So we're back. Can you see the beautiful mountain laurel that Pennsylvania is known for? Once again, beautiful trail. Down there is the creek. You can semi see it through the trees and through the laurel, but it's pretty thick in here. But just a really just beautiful area. This has been a joy to be out here hiking. I brought a light, light like wind jacket, and even with that, I'm getting hot. I think today is supposed to get up maybe in the 80s. I want to try to get out to one of my friends. They just moved up here and. I'm doing some cleanup work and some mowing for them. I'd like to get out there to do that. It's just my back's a little funky right now. Depending on how I'm feeling once I get back from the hike. And then we'll go from there. But it's just one of those things I just thought, you know, spur of the moment. Let's go out there. And I think the sea, like, it almost looks like 
Maybe this is a natural thing with the rock. It almost seems like that rock down there is squared off. I'm probably just seeing something that's just a line there in the moss that's on the rock. But like I said, once again, this was an area that there were homes all through here. I haven't been through here in a long time. So I think when I was more young and virile and not the old grumpy man that I am now who has all kinds of issues, I said to my friend yesterday when I did the estimate, I said, I said, I think I'm relatively healthy except for everything that's wrong with me. But, uh, so we'll pause here again because I got people coming up. All right, so we are back. So I just had a nice gentleman that I asked him how much further it is to Bordner Cabin. About four tenths of a mile. Now it's probably about three tenths of a mile. Um, I also, I'm not going to lie. I couldn't remember the hardware store, so I quick looked it up. It's Long and Necker's Hardware Store. It's a true value hardware store. The place is freaking amazing. It just has everything. If you like like tools, you'll like that place. If you like home home stuff like decor, cool place for that. Appliances, all that kind of stuff. But they have all kinds of neat stuff in there. I'm always salivating when I'm working there. You're seeing all this stuff. But that's where they have these really cool, like, handcrafted... Uh, canes or not canes walking sticks not that I don't need one but anyway it was cool the guy let me know and but we'll almost be there soon and hopefully there aren't a ton of people down there but there probably will be some uh, that young family is probably there right now so we'll sort of work our way in there without making it awkward for people or ruining their experience and uh, check it out and give you a little bit of that history when it was built, some of the information about Armar uh, Bordner is A R M A R, I believe. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. Armar uh, Bordner. Talked about his family a little bit. Some of those things, the agreement that he made with the state then to be able to remain, and uh, and what's become of it since, and some of the people that have caretaken for it since uh, he passed away. And like I said, I want to put up that audio file. I just have to find it and then I'll put the link to it because it's actually a really intriguing uh, he talks about you know past and how his mom used to work for the Coleman family and the railway that went along here and all that stuff which the railway would have been on the other side of Swatera but I believe there was a station there where that in the general region where that uh, parking lot is the sand siding station which I believe was used for people to go down to uh, that Twin Grove Park and uh, my dad and his sister used to go down through there and his dad would give him a little bit of money like pocket change to be able to you know buy cotton candy or ride the rides because they had bumper cars there they had a carousel just they had a swimming pool on the other side on this side of 443 it's just a really really beautiful park now but back then it was just one of those classic small town amusement parks that got lost over time and then eventually somebody bought it again and fixed it up we're definitely getting close now because i can hear the uh the falls and there's a story behind that as well and they believe we found either a wild m m or a wild skittle hard to find in nature Usually they run. That one was not uh, terrified of being eaten. Apparently it's been fed by the public. And uh, say that's one of the most dangerous things you can do for wild animals. To, they lose fear of uh, humans. Says, what is the dangerous animal of all humans? Sorry for that. But now that I'm feeling better, my weirdness comes out. Weird in a good way, I guess. But uh, I like to have fun and have a weird sense of humor. But uh, yeah, you can definitely hear the falls. I think I see the cabin right up there too. Yeah, I see it right up there. Now the question is, how do you get up there? Because I have not been out here for a while. I think it's over on the other side of the creek is where the road goes up. Like I said before, this is known as the falling water. Of Lebanon County or 
eastern Pennsylvania. Just a really unique it's a placement. The building's really pretty, uh, the construction and everything, because I believe he did have, uh, he worked as an archi architect as well, an engineer, one of those. But uh, I'm hoping that's not the path. If it is, we'll go that way, but I will not be filming going up through, I do not think, just because I want to watch where I'm going. Because my balance is terrible. Yeah, thank God there is a path over here. I was a little nervous there for a second. I was like, I thought there was a road going up to it. I'm too young to die. Let me just see here how beautiful this stream is. Just the sounds. This is the sounds of pure, unadulterated nature out here. You don't have the traffic sounds, even from like 81, which is above us. You just don't have that. It's just, it's pure nature. You look at some of these beautiful trees. Not a whole lot of foliage yet, but yeah. Huh. Let's head up the path. I do hear people up there. I think that family's up here. But there you have the Bordner cabin. I have to look exactly. I think it's probably a mile and a half, two miles. But it's probably about a 40-mile hike to come back here. But we'll go in the cabin itself. We'll go over to the uh, Criggs Falls. And then I'll tell you some stories about that. And we'll go from there. And then our video and our adventure will be done. It's a nice little birdhouse over there. It's probably a blue birdhouse. Always loved the bluebirds and the golden finches, or yellow finches, whatever they're called. They just have that golden, vibrant color to them. I hear you see it. It's the cabin up there. Armar Bordner. I think you can even go upstairs and everything. There's cool. He had the, I believe, daffodils. One of the signs that there was humanity here, I believe those are like violets or something of that nature. I'm probably wrong. Jennifer uh, Butcher knows a lot of these different flowers. Cliff does as well, but she had, I had taken a picture on Instagram. I, believe, I was like, I believe it's a wildflower, and she so let me know is the uh, wild violet. But these would be probably more might even be some kind of viney type thing here too because this is a lot of times you can tell if there was habitation you'll see sort of these things here because they're not native to the uh the area but beautiful flowering plant Maybe there's even a bathroom there very nice i think we're gonna go over to the a Craig falls first I'll talk about that. It's named after the uh, first owner, which I'm gonna pause here. You can see some of the little bit of falls here. The one up there is above, which we'll go to. We can shoot, shoot from the house and really see it. But you can just see how beautiful it is through here. Here we down in the, would be the basement. You can see all the stonework. This is probably where he park his car as well. You just see how extensive this place is. It's really, really neat. And we'll go upstairs in the actual house itself. That's where he would have had like the furnace. Really neat. So let's go upstairs. All right, so let's go up the steps here. And go up into the house itself. So this house was built in 1939 and uh, he got the help of, he had taught at Northern Lebanon and some of his students actually helped out in building this. He had sought, taught shop, and I believe also like architecture. So you just get to see how amazing this place is. And here is the coolest feature. This is a Craig Falls.
This is actually named after his name is Colonel Benjamin. He owned this land originally. He was the chief engineer architect of the Union Canal, the northern branch. So they actually named it after him. You can actually go the whole way up there. I'm not going to do that because I'm old and decrepit and I don't want to die. But let's just quick go through the rest of the house. Just beautiful different rooms here. It's like, huh? You get to see pictures of what it looked like. porch and how amazing this is. Oh, cool. And this is fireplace here. Mantle is beautiful. That prize went downstairs. And they're just the different rooms. Really, really beautiful here. <laughs> so I'm going to pause here before we go up the stairs because I don't want to fall. All right, so we're now upstairs here. You can see how you can look down in the cabin. Just look at all the cross beams. That's how beautiful that is and the stonework. And look down over the trail that we came up through really is impressive I have a much greater appreciation for this than back when I was a kid didn't fully understand how amazing this is we pause in here so I just wanted to check out this room too with you guys because this is something that we didn't check out earlier cool lookout window like I said, they removed all the windows and doors, and so I got just a lot of it had to do with not wanting to have the vandalism. So I did get a look at what it looked like with the windows and everything. But yeah, they uh, built this in 1939. Armour Bordner was uh, very much involved in Northern Lebanon High School, got a lot of help from them. His wife, uh, Margaret Pegg, and his daughter, Linda, helped to build all this. and. And thankfully, when they did take everybody's homes, they allowed him to pay like a rent lease to be able to stay here uh, till he died in 1994. His wife passed away much earlier than him. But I uh, always like these nooks that they have in the chimneys. We have one like that in our uh, chimney over in Greenpoint. But uh, Boy Scouts stayed here, leased it for about five years, and then ultimately... Uh, Governor Rendell was petitioned because they wanted to make sure this would be taken over by DCNR and conserved. So ultimately, they wound out doing that, and they're the ones that run this and take care of it. And Joe and Litz, once again, is a major part of making sure that this place is preserved. So they do have to do, because it's open and because it's wood, they do, do have to do that preservation and conservation to make sure that it's preserved for all time as long as possible. So with that, I'll say thank you for coming along. I might say a few more things. I want to take a bunch of pictures here. And uh, we'll see you all about town. Thanks, everybody, for coming along.